Here we're going to tie the near enough crayfish. First thing we're going to do is just get our thread started here. And the next thing to do is add a pair of eyes. And the eyes I'm going to use are a little different than the ones that are traditionally used. I'm going to just going to use a pair of pseudo eyes. I think Mr. Whitlock actually paints his eyes either orange or brown depending on the the uh, color that you're tying, but uh, we're not going to paint our lead eyes ourselves. We're just going to tie in a pair of red pseudo eyes, and you can use a pair of just black dumbbell eyes or even a red painted lead eye. I don't know if the eyes make a huge difference. And once you get these nice and secure, we're going to take our thread all the way back to the back here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the antenna, which is just going to be a black piece of life flex. And I'm just going to tie it in on one side, then just pull it to the other side and tie it in. We'll make sure we get all the way back to the bend of the hook with this life flex. Now this life flex needs to be trimmed about a length and a half of the shank of the hook. So I just trim that to length. Now the next thing we're going to tie in is going to be a piece of crystal flash, some pearl crystal flash. We're just going to tie this in the same way. to each side. And this crystal flash also needs to be fairly long as well. It needs to be a little bit longer than those black antenna that we just tied in. Now, the next piece is a pumpkin barred and speckled crazy leg. We're going to tie this in also the same way. These will be basically the antennas and the mouth parts of your crayfish. Now once you have those tied in, these are trimmed a little bit shorter. These are going to be trimmed about the length of the shank of the hook, just shorter than the black pieces of life flex. If you can, get them to splay a little more to the side. Now the next part is to add the kind of breather or mouth portions of the, the fly here. For that we're going to use a lighter colored piece of rabbit, like a light brown or a tan or cream. And I strip out all the guard hairs so I just have the fluffy portion. And we're going to tie this in. We want it to be about oh, a quarter to a half of the length of the shank of the hook. We're just going to tie that in. Just let it stick out there. There we go. Now we're ready for the eyes. For the eyes I'm just going to use some black mono crab eyes. You can make your own. These are already pre-made. We're going to tie these in. We want them to be just a hair longer than the uh, mouth part that we just tied in. A little bit longer than the rabbit. So we're just going to tie these in on each, each side of the shank of the hook. I usually double over them so they don't fall out. And we're going to do the same thing here on the other side, making sure that they're exactly the same length.
And then once you've got those tied in, what I usually do is I grab both of them and I kind of cock them to the side, put a little kink in them. That'll make them a little bit more distinct, keep them from falling to the side. Some people even take their thread and they'll do a wrap right behind them to kind of pull them to the side. You can do that if you like. Just go in right behind them and kind of pull it, pull it with your thread. And you can see we have our eyes split there. Now the next thing to do is we're going to add a little bit of dubbing to this fly. Here we're going to tie a orange variation. It can be tied in other colors as well. It can be tied in dirty olive, natural brown, uh, dark brown. It can be tied in a few different colors, but natural orange is a pretty common color for this fly to be tied in. And I'm just using a SLF Dave Whitlock, Whitlock dubbing blend that's basically made for this fly. This is the crayfish natural orange and it was specifically made to tie the near enough crayfish. You can blend your own. I think some people will make a blend with natural rabbit and antron and flashaboo but it's a lot easier just to to buy the blend pre-made. All I'm doing is I'm building up a little bit of a dubbing ball here. Once I've built up that dubbing ball we're ready to tie in our claws. For that I'm going to use a piece of India henback and orange. I'm going to take two of them and match them as closely as I can. And these have a natural curve to them. I want to tie them in with the curve facing up. And we want this claw to be about the length of the body right here. So this one's a little big so I'm just going to shave off a few fibers here. And then I'll do the same thing on my other one, try to get it to, to match as close as I can. Alright. I'm going to tie these in with the curve facing up. You can tie them in long if you need to and then pull them to shorten them up. And I want them to splay to each side as well. It's not cooperating here. Let's try again. It's a bit of a it takes a bit of a work here to get them placed right. They like to roll on you. There we go. Still trying to get it to lay down just right. This is probably the most difficult part of the fly is getting these feathers to cooperate with you. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some more dubbing. and the dubbing we're going to try to make these claws cooperate a little bit more with this dubbing. So what we're going to do is just put a little bit on for this part here. We're just going to try to wrap back up onto these feathers, get them to lay back a little bit more and I also use my fingers to try to make them go into place. There we go. So essentially we have two claws. Now the next thing to do is to tie in our soft hackle. And I'm going to just see, going to use a grizzly soft hackle feather. We're going to tie this in by the tip. So I'm going to peel all those fibers backwards here. I'm going to tie this in right in front of the claws. 
and just let it hang there for now. Now we're ready to dub the thorax or the rest of the, the body. For that we're going to just use the same dubbing. I'm just going to add it in chunks and just work my way forward. adding a little bit as I work my way forward. This stuff is fairly easy to dub compared to a lot of the other synthetics out there. The natural fur mixed, it, mixed in with it makes it pretty easy to dub with. Once I get near the eyes, we are going to dub around these eyes. So I'm going to add just a thin layer of dubbing here. work my way up here to the eyes. And we're just going to go around these eyes a couple of times. Do a little bit more, cover it all up here. And before I really dub those all the way, I'm going to wrap my soft hackle. So what I'm going to do is just clip in with my hackle pliers here. I'm just going to take my fingers and stroke back these fibers and wrap the soft tackle here. I'm just going to wrap it forward. Once I get up here right behind the eyes, I'm just going to capture it with my thread. Trim out the excess. And then you can stroke these fibers back here. You should stroke back fairly nice. Lay back a little bit. There we go. Now I'm ready to finish dubbing. And it doesn't take much to finish it here. I'm just going to put on a little thin layer. There we go. I'm going to take my thread right in front of the eyes, ready to finish it off and add the tail. For that we're going to use the same piece of light colored rabbit. And again I'm just going to take all those guard furs, guard, guard hairs, pull them all out and we're going to tie this in right on top of the head so I'll just pinch it into place with my finger and it should splay up kind of like a little mohawk and you can trim out the rest of it and then you can clean up your your head region here go and you essentially have a finished near enough crayfish this is the natural orange color in a lot of other different colors mr. Whitlock actually does take a nail polish and he'll paint little red claws on or little red tips on the end of these claws I skipped that step I don't have any red nail polish laying around and it's not something I think that is crucial to actually fishing the fly so it's not really necessary but that is the near enough crayfish give you a better view here great little bass fly carp fly small mouth catches all of them and that's all there is to it and you can get all the materials for this fly at 
in the riffle.com.